All right, so finally, here we got our lovely ladies again, and they're going to teach us how to actually add and subtract some rational expressions. We're adding fractions that have algebras, algebras, algebra in them, uh, and the denominators are totally different, so we have to get a least common denominator. So, um, adding and subtracting rational expressions, just like, just as painless or painful, depending on how, your perspective, is adding and subtracting any other fractions, one of the ways to add and subtract fractions is just multiply the bottom straight across. That would be a common denominator, but it may not be the least common denominator. But once you do get the common denominator, you just add the tops together, okay? All right. So what we said before, in order to get that least common denominator, you're going to factor both of the bottoms and then find the highest power of each of the factors and multiply them all together. That's going to be the least common denominator. Um, right, okay, so let's try that right here. Step number one, let's factor the denominators. So the first one, I have 10x squared. It's pretty much factored. Sure, I could do this as a 2 times 5 times x times x if I wanted to, all right? On the second one, I have 5x squared minus 10x. Let's pull out a 5 and an x. So 5x times, and then I'd have x minus 2. Okay? So when I go to get a least common denominator, the least common multiple is going to be, um, let's see, I need a 2 from this one. So a 2 times, I need a 5. There's a 5 in both of them, whatever. Highest power is 1. Um, I have both of these x's, the highest power was x squared, so I need that. And then I need this factor of x minus 2. So that is 10x squared times x minus 2. Okay, so let's switch colors here and determine what are we going to have to multiply the top and bottom on each one of these fractions so that we can add them together. So looking at what we have here, and comparing it to the prime factors of the first one, what I'm missing is in a factor of x minus 2. So I need to multiply this by x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. Okay, and what am I missing from the second one? Uh, I have a 5 in there, so I'm missing a 2, and I'm missing a factor of an x. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by 2x. 2x has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that there was a 2x already on the top there. It was a total coincidence. Okay, so now let's just uh, simplify our fractions now. So distribute this 3 across here, and I'd have 3x plus, no, yep, 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 minus 6, yeah, over the common denominator we know is 10x squared times x minus 2 plus, and now multiplying these two together, I have 4x squared over 10x squared times x minus 2. Now what do I do? Keep the denominators the same and just add up the tops. And of course put it in standard form, so I'm going to start with the 4x squared plus 3x minus 6 all over 10x squared times x minus 2 and you may be done, but maybe not. Uh, it's possible that the top would factor and have a common factor of x minus 2 in it. If it did, then you'd have to cancel those out, because it would simplify. So uh, just like right off to the side, let's see if we can factor that thing. So open up two set of parentheses here. We're factoring the top. How about, say, a 2 and a 2 for the 4? So a 2x and a 2x. And for the last term, it has to be a 6. So since it has to be a 6, I could do a a 2 and a 3. There's a problem with that. The problem is, is that the first set of parentheses has a common factor of 2, which means that the original one would have had a common factor of 2, and it doesn't. Can I just switch those out, a 2 and a 3? No, because then the second one will. All right, so let's say that it's not that factor, those factors at all. Maybe it's a 6 and a 1 here. So a 6 and a 1. Oh, but I run into the same exact problem. They have a common factor of 2, which means that everything would have been even to begin with, when it's not. All right, so then you try, oh, mm, maybe it's got to be a 4 and a 1. Do you see where this is going? I hope that you do, because either way I do it, I'm going to have two evens together, and which is pretty much saying that you can't factor it. It's not factorable. So 
this was or is our final answer in simplest form. All right, so let's try a subtraction problem then. Is it going to be much different? No, it's just I'm going to subtract the second part. I still need to get a common denominator. Let's switch back to purple right there. So let's factor um, the top here, or the, the first fraction. I got 3x minus 15, which factors as 3 times x minus 5. And the second one, I have x squared minus 4x minus 5. How's that going to factor? Mirror, 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 mirror. Um, probably x minus 5 times x plus 1. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and write down what my common denominator is going to be. I need a 3 here. I need um, an x minus 5. They both have one of those. x minus 5. And I have a x plus 1. Okay, so if that's the common denominator, what was I missing from the first denominator? I was missing a factor of x plus 1. So x plus 1. That's what I'm going to have to multiply the first fraction by. Okay, so what would I be, what was I missing from the second one? I'm just missing a 3, right? I'm just missing a 3. So this one is going to be multiplied by 3 over 3. Okay, um, this fraction bar got a little bit too long. I'm going to shorten that. There we go. So let's distribute here across the top. x squared plus x minus, let's do the same thing on the next one, 3 times, okay, distribute here. I'd get 6x plus 6. Now subtract the tops. Keep the bottoms the same. So nothing combined x squared up with, so that's x squared. I'd have x minus 6x, which is negative 5x. And uh, then I just have this negative, basically a 0, minus 6, so it's a negative 6. Over my original denominator, 3x minus 5, x plus 1. Am I done? I don't know yet. I just don't know until I factor the top. I think the top factors as x minus 6, yep, and x plus 1 over 3, x minus 5 times. <gasps> Look at this. Look what's going to happen. Cancel, cancel. Oh, it feels so satisfying. My final answer then is x minus 6 all divided by 3 times x minus 5. And that one's finished. I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, I'd like to practice some of those on my own. So let me let you do that. Here are two of them for you to practice all by yourself. Hey, make sure you pause that video, okay? Pause that video, try them on your own. Come back, see if you did it right. <sighs> is that a little tough? Maybe, maybe not. Um, hmm. Ooh, ooh. Look at that. Look at the. Look how colorful this is. So if nothing else, at least you can make this thing colorful. Um, anyway, so what I did here is I went ahead and on number one factored both the, the bottoms and uh, saw what my common denominator had to be. So the first one was missing a twelve, and so I multiplied top and bottom by twelve. And the second one was missing a factor of x. Well, excuse me, x plus 3, top and bottom. Uh, multiply that, distribute the 5, combine the tops. Okay. Over here on number 2, same thing, factor the bottoms. And what was I missing on the first one? I was missing a factor of x minus 2. On the second one, I was missing a factor of x plus 2. Look what I did. I, I kind of shortcut this so that I didn't have to write the denominator. And I would expect that you would probably be doing this too. You do it enough, you don't have to keep writing out each one of the steps. So after you find the common denominator, just write it. And then I went ahead and wrote out what I would have gotten on the top left-hand side if I were to foil out x minus 2 times x plus 1. That's right there. And then distribute the negative 6, taking that negative with the 6 times x plus 2. And that's over here on the right-hand side. So it's all together on one fraction. And then just add up the whole top. Simplify that. And you would factor it if you could, but you can't. 
And so there's the final answer. And no, you do not have to foil out the bottom. You just keep it like that, okay? So there you go. There's adding and subtracting rational expressions. Just like adding and subtracting fractions, you got to get a common denominator. The best way to get a common denominator is look for the least common multiple. You want to factor both of the denominators and then find the highest power of each one of those factors and multiply them together, okay? All right, so stay tuned for objective two on complex fractions.